Yes, indeed. Another episode of Rip and Reef here on the Fantasy Alarm and Better Sports Network YouTube pages. I am Adam Bernard at Pucking Thoughts and the man to my right, as always, at Mr. Jared Moore on Twitter. You guessed it. His name is Al Smith. Nope, nope, nope. Jared Moore. Jared, how we doing? I'm doing good. Uh, I decided I'm not doing the point thing this week. No, you just got too confused and it's just too much. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm too dumb to get it right. So at, at some point, you just got to cut your losses and move on. I mean, it, the lesson is I never try, according to one Homer Simpson. So there you yes. go. There you go. It, it, you did try, and that matters. But the important lesson is not to try. For you, for the, for you, for you youngins out there that are like watching us rip cards, learn that lesson early. Yes, sir. All right. What do you got today? All right. So today, uh, you know, we got the NFL playoffs going on. It is divisional weekend. Um, I got some uh, 1999 uh, Tops football cards here. That's what the pack looks like. Danny Marino on there. Uh, we got looking for a potential rookies. Donovan McNabb, Edgerin James, Champ Bailey, Torrey Holt. Uh, you know, the inserts. You got the NFL draft picks. It's its own set, plus uh, some autographs in there. And I might even have a quick little uh, bonus pack here. I found the random five-card pack of these that must have fell out of my stash, so we'll just crack those open as well. Oh, nice. Uh, the, very nice to do that. Yeah, we uh, can't get enough football this time of year. So uh, very excited for that. And uh, since we can't get enough football this time of year, I decided I'm going to go baseball. Because you know what? We're only about what, a couple weeks away from pitchers and catchers reporting. And, uh, the, and you know, especially, you know, I know originally you're from the Northeast. Uh, I'm from the Northeast. So uh, the first time you see like those spring training games on TV and uh, the pitchers and catchers and you know, spring training baseball and uh, all that stuff. It, it's a sign that like spring's right around the corner. N- nicer weather's here, and uh, you know, uh, nicer weather leads to you know it gets dark later in the day. You get to you know do more stuff outdoors and and stuff like that. So we're gonna go baseball today. I got nice. a couple packs of the uh, Tops Archive Baseball 2021 pack. Uh, picked these up probably about six uh, six months ago, and. Uh, I've been waiting for an opportunity to uh, to dive into these, so uh, definitely looking forward to that. And then uh, just to uh, kind of uh, clear out some of the backlog a little bit, also a, a pack of the 2010 uh, Tops uh, Baseball Series One uh, base set of cards with uh, future Hall of Famer Albert Pujols on the cover there. So I gotta say, the the first for the pack you just flashed up there, you're looking for Madison Bumgarner rookie in that one, and then in the 2021 archives, there's also an Alec Bohm, uh, uh, Andrew Vaughn, and uh, the infamous Clark Schmidt uh, rookie cards in those. So, uh, yeah, and the oh, yeah, I, I, I would imagine that Clark Schmidt uh, rookie card's gonna have a lot of value when he's putting up a four and a half ERA for the Yankees again this year. You're gonna need to send that one in to uh, PSA to get graded if you pull that one for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm in the process of uh, the guy I went to last time to get my cards graded is uh, taking submissions again. So I'm in the process of deciding. Uh, all right, what do I want to take to get graded to keep? What do I want to take to get graded to sell? And kind of going from there. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, that, the, the decisions to make, you got to spend the money and all that stuff. So it's good that you got a guy that takes care of it for you, that does that service. Just going back to spring training for a minute, but at our, my prior job, I was able to experience both of them, Arizona and uh, Florida, the Grapefruit League and the Cactus League. They're both awesome. If you've never done spring training before and you're a baseball fan or of a definitely hundred percent, you definitely want to go to spring training. Arizona is probably a better one to do just because it's a little more uh, centralized with the location. Uh, Florida, you got teams all over the state, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, maybe, maybe eight or nine years ago, I did a, a little uh, mini spring training tour. I saw the Yankees in Tampa and then we went to see uh, the Braves over at Disney. Nice, nice up there at Orlando. And yeah, you by having done both, you're right. There's a lot of driving for Florida where basically just put like a go to the center of Phoenix and then basically everything's basically a 45 to 60 minute radius from the middle of Phoenix for uh, the Arizona. It's just what direction you want to want to go in on any particular day. Which is great. Yeah. And there's in the team share facilities too. I know the White Sox and the Dodgers used to. I don't know if they still do, but yeah, spring training's fun. Now all this baseball talk. Are we going to kick? Are we going to start with baseball cards? Are we going to go uh, football? Yeah, cards? let's start with baseball. Let's start with baseball. Uh, I, I got a lot to go through here, and uh, I'm excited to uh, to rip this pack open. So uh, let's uh, get this uh, nice and ripped open. I already I already love the look of these cards. As we start here with uh, Chris Bryant of the uh, then San Francisco Giants. 
There we go. Chris Bryant, good looking card there. You know, like you said, nice frame around there, kind of that throwback vibe. Yep. Uh, we got a rookie card here of uh, Brent Rooker from the uh, Minnesota Twins. Nice. Good rookie card to have there. And uh, we got another rookie card. Unfortunately, uh, this player is no longer with the New York Yankees. Uh, he was uh, recently traded, but uh, Estevan Florial uh, rookie card here. And uh, what trade was he a part of again? Uh, I forget. They traded him for uh, they got a pitcher back for him because they traded a, a bunch of their uh, their depth pitchers on the 40 man roster in the Juan Soto trade. So I think they used Florial to try to recoup some of that pitching depth. Who's now with the uh, Guardians, it looks like. Yeah, uh, I want to say Cody something or other. or uh, I, I forget the guy's name. Uh, I'm sure I'll be rem uh, reminded 8 billion times this year when he's uh, actually playing well in uh, in Cleveland. Uh, yeah. He's never really got a chance in New York. Uh, but we got a few legends here, which is nice. We got a nice mix of the legends as well. So uh, uh, go to a guy who... Uh, I think by the time this episode's out, it's either going to be right before or right after the Hall of Fame announcement. And this guy is probably going to get in. Joe Maurer from your Minnesota Twins, former MVP. Although uh, uh, he kind of took Jeter's MVP as far as I'm concerned. I would agree with that. And uh, yeah, I mean, him and uh, Justin Morneau were the one-two punch there in uh, the Twin Cities for a long time. Yep. And uh, another uh, legend here, Hall of Famer, Tommy Glavin. There we go. Also was drafted by the L.A. Kings, Tom Glavin. And uh, we'll find out the Hall of Fame announcements on Tuesday. So a couple days yep. after this comes out. Very nice. And a uh, nice little double card here with uh, the Killer V's from the Houston Astros before they were a bunch of unlikable dirtbags. Uh, Jeff Bagwell and Craig Biggio. <laughs> before, I mean, it's true, though, because like the Astros were not a team. They were a benign team. You didn't like dislike them or like them unless you were a direct rival. And then, yeah, now everybody dislikes them. Right. They were one of those teams. If you're a casual baseball fan, like everyone knew who like Jeff Bagwell, Craig Biggio were. And then um, Lance Berkman. And then, yeah, and then yeah, exactly. Lance Berkman. And then he had the team in 05 that got to the World Series. And then uh, and then all those guys got old and retired or got traded away. And, uh, and now uh, we have the, you know, this little dynast dynastic or. Uh, uh, Orioles, a dynastic Astros team that is uh, completely unlikable to they, uh, root for. One of the guys on that team, by the way, uh, George Springer. George Springer, there you go. When uh, they first got Clemens and Pettit, they kind of had a little bit of that bad boy vibe, like a little bit of that, like uh, e you know, enemy vibe, heel vibe, but it didn't really last long. But now, for sure. Yep, and another guy who I think was an Astro at one point or another, uh, Trey Mancini, uh, here pictured with the uh, Baltimore Orioles. Ray Mancini, fun name to say. Yeah, it's a fun name to say. And that does it for that first pack. I got one more of these packs to go through. So uh, hopefully uh, we get a nice uh, rookie card in here. Uh, hopefully a little better than uh, Estevan Florial. Yeah, we'd like a little bit better than that. All right. Uh, I hate these packs that are like impossible to freaking get open without like really tugging at it. I was opening a 95 Fleer and I guess it was last night just because it was like, I guess like the humidity or the, you know, like sometimes they stick. Like I had to actually get like legit scissors out to like get the pack open. Like <laughs> even like the small pocket knife ones weren't cutting it. Yep. And uh, all right. Now this is a gorgeous card here. Uh, oh, we start this one with a uh, little tops 40th, uh, 40 years of baseball anniversary style card. How about Ernie Banks from your Chicago Cubs? See, that's cool because it's got the 40th anniversary look with an all-time legend there. I mean, that's just, you know, that that definitely needs to be put in a penny sleeve for sure. And uh, and you look at the back of this card, uh, that's exactly how the, the baseball cards used to look back in the day. So, And I get it. Like, you're not going to do that anymore. But, like, I, I kind of liked having, like, a whole career, like, on the back of a card to look at, you know, before, like, the baseball reference and hockey references of the world existed. Uh, you got a couple rookie cards here uh, from your uh, Minnesota Twins, Alex Killeroff. Okay. Good and from your, and from your uh, San Diego Padres, uh, I'm going to butcher this last name, so you're going to have to forgive me, Luis uh, Camposano. I don't think he did that set, uh, that did that bad, Camposano. That looks right to me. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it looks right. I don't know if it is right, so uh, I, I don't want to butcher the poor uh, kid's last name, but... Uh, moving on, uh, very nice, uh, very nice uh, Mookie Betts uh, card here. 
Very nice. The Dodgers this year are just absolutely stacked. They, when they did the Oscar Hernandez edition, I mean, geez. <laughs> it, it, it's absolutely ridiculous. And I, lo- I love uh, just looking at the back of this card. Uh, the style the style of the back of the card also changes depending on how the front of it looks. So uh, I like that about this pack. Hey, hey, what, they're do- what they do with those packs is they're directly targeting people like Jared and me that open up the pack, like the look of those packs the first time when they were original. That's That's who they're after. Uh, and the, this pack's also after my heart for a few reasons. Uh, because uh, this next card is it doesn't get much more vintage looking than this. How about Juan Soto from your Washington Nationals? Now, I believe that's one of those like peel them subset ones, but yeah, that's a cool looking one. I love that Nationals hat there, but I believe that's like a peel them subset. I want to say, uh, I'm not 100% sure on that, and uh, it's a pretty, pretty plain uh, back of the card look as well there. So, uh, I mean, it, is that? I mean, uh, I, I wasn't on the screen. I'm going to look it up. But the, the peel them cards. I mean, I it doesn't look like I can actually peel anything with this card. It's just the style, I'm sure. But yeah, it's that's uh, a cool looking card. Uh, three more cards here in this pack. Uh, we have uh, from the uh, then Boston Red Sox, uh, Kyle Schwarber. Nice. And. Yeah, even the back of these cards is uh I, I just love how they all have the different unique look. Uh and for some reason Kyle Schwarber kind of looks like almost like a video game photo here. It's uh, He does, yeah. I totally yeah. I totally see that. Yeah, it'll throw me off there a little bit, but uh still like that card. Uh one of the uh one of the all time greats here, uh uh Hall of Famer Dave Winfield, here pictured with the San Diego Padres. Played with the Yankees and Twins as well. Yep. And uh, can you give me the last couple teams as well? Let's uh, knock out the try. So, so Yankees, Twins, Padres. Did he play for the Angels? For two years. How many more am I missing? Two more teams. Both American League. Play for the Devil Rays? No, the yeah. Devil Rays didn't I, exist yet. I, I thought maybe he might have. Who knows? Um, You're looking for uh, the Blue Jays. They were, that's right. That's one of them. Yeah, I don't know the other one. And he was on the Indians in '95. Okay, really. I don't remember. Uh, I don't know if he was. I don't remember him there either. And and that and that was a team '95. '95, the Indians got to the World Series. Yeah, they lost right? the Braves that year. They yeah. lost the Braves. So, yeah. uh, I don't remember Dave Winfield that postseason, but he, I mean, I, I, yeah, I suppose he was on that team. And uh, last but not least, uh, uh, since we can't pull enough Houston Astros on the show apparently Zach Grinke there you go one of the better pitchers of his time now I want to go back to Juan Soto for a second what scale of one to ten your excitement level for Juan Soto in the Bronx this year uh I mean he's exactly what that not lineup needs I mean for <sighs> the Yankees have been ignoring uh left-handed power hitting for a long time uh and, you know at least for like the last seven eight nine ten years or so and like that is a perfect bat to put uh, in the line of either in front of Judge or behind Judge. I don't think it really matters. Uh, I don't think you can go wrong in either direction, but having a huge power bat like that to just to, to break up that run of right right handed hitters is, you know, just to diversifies the lineup so much. And uh, I love that. I, lo- I love the fit with the stadium. I worry that it's just going to be a one and done because, uh, you know, he's a Boris guy. He's gonna go want. He's gonna want to get paid a lot of money, and I don't know if the Yankees are necessarily going to want to do that. But I also don't think the Yankees made this trade with the intention of him just playing one year and leaving. So I would hope they find a way to keep him, and uh, hopefully we get Juan Soto in the Bronx for uh, for many, many more years to come. He would definitely be a great compliment in the outfield. Now, if he if they win this year, but he does not stay with the Yankees, is it worth it to you then? Is, is the championship worth the trade at that point if he only stays one year? Yeah, if they win a championship, uh, sure. Yeah, hundred percent. But okay. uh, I don't expect them to win the World Series this year, so no, no. uh, kind of is what it is. So uh, we, we got our last pack here, the twenty ten uh, baseball series one pack. Nice. Been looking forward uh, to that. Ho- one. Yeah, hopefully we get a couple uh, nice pulls out of this one, and we start here with. Uh, uh, from the uh, Cincinnati Reds, Francisco Cordero. Frankie Cordero, one of the premier closers uh, when he was at his peak. Yeah, pretty good player in his prime. So uh, very nice way to start off. And I like the design of these cards, the 
big old Reds logo right there in the bottom left of the card. It's a cool nice shot. shot. Uh, player I remember, because uh, I think he was with the Red Sox as well, uh, Justin Masterson, uh, here picture with the Cleveland Indians. They used the actual team word mark at the bottom, too, for each uh, team font, which is cool. Yep, and obviously this is a pre-name uh, change with the uh, with the Guardians. I'm never going to get used to that. Yeah. Um, Let's see if we can uh, pull a card out of the state of Ohio on this one. <laughs> well, we got one out of the state of Ohio. We got a rookie card here from the uh, Arizona Diamondbacks. Brandon Allen, not really familiar with this player, though, unfortunately. So I don't think he had a very uh, long or productive major league career. I think I'm more familiar with the quarterback, Brandon Allen, than the player, a full baseball player. <laughs> A hundred percent. Um, one of one of the great uh, nicknames of all time. Uh, how about Country Breakfast here with Billy Butler? That is a great uh, nickname. I mean, yeah, Country Breakfast. I mean, and who doesn't love a Country Breakfast? Unless you're vegan, but I mean, otherwise, who doesn't love it? Yep. And uh, one of our uh, prime uh, New York Yankees, uh, uh, Sal Fasano All Stars, on the team for one year or less. I have a Billy Butler Yankee card somewhere. Uh, I'd have to find it, and uh, I'll, I'll find it. And I'll send the picture to you afterwards. You can uh, insert it in post. There we uh, go. From your uh, San Diego Padres, David Eckstein or Eckstein. Eckstein, Eckstein. Yeah, it was also on that 2002 Angels team, was uh, I believe, and the uh, 06 Cardinals, I believe, as well. So uh, one of the winningest players of his era. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, this is exactly who I think it is uh, from your Atlanta Braves and uh, probably one of the more disappointing Yankees of uh, the mid 2000s, Javier Vasquez. Yeah, yeah, that did not get off to a, a great that, that never really got off on the right foot. Javier Vasquez, we just needed him to be like a good three and he just totally imploded. And he was one of those guys. He was pretty good, like just about everywhere. He just never really pitched well for the Yankees. Like the Yankees even went down the road a second time with him, and it just didn't. It never worked out. Yeah. Well, I mean, listen. They, they, they again. The lesson is don't try. Don't go down the second row again. Yeah. Or, or the lesson is uh, don't have Brian Cashman be the uh, you know better job t- uh, security than a Supreme Court justice. Like we're talking about trades from like twenty years ago, and he's still the GM. Like, well, what are we? Doing I know. Here? I know. Well, he, um, he's got to know something that keeps him employed. He's got to know something. Yeah, he knows where all the Steinbrenner skeletons are buried, which uh, I don't know. I got nothing else there. <laughs> uh, we got a nice little insert card here of a uh, Milwaukee Brewers history. So I know you're always a fan of these. Uh, nice shot of uh, Miller Park there, which I don't even think it's even called Miller Park anymore. I think it's got a probably changed. Now. But that's a, um, a new stadium, too. I believe that stadium's even getting old for them because they played at the old county stadium before that, which is where Major League was filmed, not in Cleveland, but at County Stadium. Yep, which is uh, one of the reasons why Dog can't get into Major League, which is hysterical. The fact that the that historical is, accuracy of it. They were in the same division, at least. I mean, come on. Back then they were. Jeez. <laughs> Uh man, that's one of my favorite bits. Uh, but we have uh, you know, some interesting names here. If you look at the all-time leaders for uh, uh, for uh, the Brewers' history, so you got your '09 leaders in you know on the team at this time was you know that was like the Ryan Braun, right. Prince Fielder era. Uh, Braden Looper led the team in wins, but their best pitcher was Giovanni Gallardo. Giovanni Gallardo, wow, pretty good pitcher for quite a few years there. Definitely had um, shares of him in some baseball leagues back in the day. Yep. And then you look like they're all time leaders. Uh, Robin Yount, obviously, you know, is mis- basically Mr. Brewer. Um, yeah. uh, but they're all time leader in batting average, Jeff Cirillo. How about Paul that? Molitor on there at all? Uh, not in the all time lists uh, for all time leaders. I just don't, I guess he wasn't there long enough. Probably didn't have, yeah. He played for a few teams as well. Yeah, he played for the Twins and I want to say he played for the Blue Jays as well. He did. He did. Yeah. So uh, moving on, we have a card that looks a lot, well, kind of similar to the cards that we just pulled, except nice little gold trim on the outside of a Royals outfielder, Coco Crisp. Looks like a nice gold parallel there. Also, not a great nickname, but just a great name in general all the time. Yeah. Great, uh, great name in general. Uh, definitely sounds like a breakfast cereal, which is, uh, you know, the very overplayed joke there with Coco Crisp. I'm sure he hasn't heard that one a billion times. Coco um, free chocolatey cereal. I digress. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Topstown card uh, with an ex uh, with an insert code here that has surely been long retired. Uh, but Brian McCann here of your Atlanta Braves. He was a good catcher for a while, and then he went to the Yankees for a little bit. Kind of caught him at the end of his career there, but very good catcher with the Braves. Uh, good catcher, and I like how he was one of those guys. Uh, if you were looking for a guy who would uh, police the unwritten rules of baseball, Brian McCann's your guy. Yeah, he is very much a, uh, you better not pimp this home run. You better just walk around the bases, keep your head down, don't say nothing. You know, one of those guys. And uh, I'm a bit of an old school guy myself, so I always appreciated that about uh, Brian McCann. For sure. Uh, a few more base Seven cards here left. Time. Uh, Garrett Anderson, pretty good player for a long time with the Angels, but here a picture with the Atlanta Braves. That's right, yeah. His career. Right there at the end. Uh, Edwin Encarnacion, who uh, was on the Yankees very briefly at the end of his career. Uh, here a picture with the Toronto Blue Jays. Very good hitter with the Blue Jays for a while. He was a thorn in the Yankees side for a bit. And, uh, well, since you mentioned thorn in the Yankees side, uh, how about the guy who... Uh, did his best to try to keep the Yankees from winning the 2009 World Series with Cliff Lee from your Philadelphia Phillies. Cliff Lee. I mean, when he was at his peak, I mean, you talk about just lefties that you had no shot against. That that was Cliff Lee. Yep. Uh, always, always drove me nuts with Cliff Lee that uh, the Yankees couldn't get him. And uh, there was like that one excuse that like, oh, uh, the, the children's hospitals are better in Philadelphia or something. And it's just like, just say you don't want to go to New York. You want to say the children's hospitals are better at a location that's much further away from New York than Philly? Uh, that's fine. But, like, come on, bro. Like, Philly's like an hour and a half down the road from New York. Like, it, it's, you know. Right. Just, like, say you don't want to go to New York because, like, you know, your wife was harassed by Yankee fans in Yankee Stadium. Just say it. <laughs> or, or be, <laughs> like, be honest you. like, I'll never play for that team. I got my reasons. You know, just be fr be upfront about it. We'll, we'll respect you more. Yeah, we'll break your balls. No, I won't respect you more for about it. Like, I, this, this is like some, uh, you know, I, I feel like New York is one of those towns that, that's not really going to fly. Like, yeah, you have the, the Cutter Godier situation with the Philadelphia Flyers where he's like, oh, I don't want to go there. And, uh, you, you don't think every time he visits uh, Philadelphia now for the rest of his career, he's not going to hear about it? Oh, well, you, you're too good to play for us in Philadelphia? Well, I got I got to give kudos to both Danny Briere and Keith Jones, the new regime there in Philadelphia, because they were basically like, okay, you don't want to be a flyer? And they took care of it right away. That was it. Yeah. You don't want to meet with and, us. And they managed to keep it quiet. This was, cool. uh, this, this was a story that apparently has been percolating behind the scenes for – However many months, and nobody really knew about it until the trade happened yesterday, and then everyone in the Flyers uh, threw uh, Cutter Godier under the bus, which was really funny. <laughs> and the fact, listen, like, don't get me wrong, Anaheim's going to have a really strong four centers for years to come, but I mean, Jamie Drysdale on a second-round pick back, that's a pretty good haul for him. So, for a guy that didn't want to be with you anyway. Yeah, it's not, that's not too shabby. So, uh, that's it. That's all the baseball packs I have for today. I got to be honest, you got me in the mood for baseball now. I'm kind of like, you know, getting Jones in for a little action here. Yeah, got the juices flowing a little bit. Got the juices stretch flowing. Out a, stretch out a little bit. Maybe yeah, you know, uh, you know, rotate a cuff loosened up, you know. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a good wiffle ball pitcher. I will say that. Now, uh, it, yeah. <laughs> I go to the batting cages. I take like three swings and then I realize I'm just old and I'm like, no, no we're, you, you were done. You were beyond washed. Uh, get out of here. Your labrum's like, what are you doing, bro? Like this, this we don't do this anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, we haven't done this for a while, buddy. <laughs> that ship sailed about 10 years ago, pal. Um, but here we are. We are in an NFL divisional playoff weekend here on Rip and Riff, Fantasy Alarm, and Better Sports and YouTube pages. We are going to get to this 99 pack that I know Jared is very excited for, but let's uh, tease you first. Let's do, uh, let's do some current players. I found this random pack here. 2023 score Panini. Uh, nothing special here. We've opened up some of these packs on the show in the past. Yep. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh boy, we're gonna have a little, we're gonna have a little fun just on the first card I see on this pack. Uh, let's add in a pack here for the base cards. This they they really Smith. don't make them easy to open nowadays. <laughs> All, right. Don't. All right, yeah, so, they, they don't make cards of uh, failed coaches, unfortunately. <laughs> well, I mean, the one failed. Th speaking of failed experiments, Mac Jones, orange parallel in New England. There he is. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can definitely put that in a sleeve and try to resell it to somebody, but, uh, yeah, I don't think Mac Jones is, uh, going to be an NFL starting quarterback for, uh, 
very much longer. His days of being a starting NFL quarterback are probably done outside of uh, coming in uh, as an injury replacement. I can see him maybe getting like some team that decides to go cheap in the offseason or an injury happens. I could see him getting one more chance, but yeah, he's he's destined to be career backup there. So uh, career backup wherever he goes. But uh, let's see. Now, uh, out of the pack here, we got four cards to go. We got a little Jair Alexander from the Green Bay Packers. I love how randomly Jair Alexander has been in the news the last month. Like between uh, uh, b- between the coin toss where, that he got suspended for, and uh, then uh, interrupting a, a news reporter while they're doing their hit outside of Lambeau Field, and the news reporter uh, didn't realize that it was Jair Alexander, the football player. She just thought it was a random fan. So uh, I'm very much here for uh, these random Jair Alexander pop ups in my life. Yeah, he, he's uh, he's definitely made a name for himself here over the last uh, month or so. We got we got a few NFC North cards in this pack. Well, the guy he often has to cover would be Justin Jefferson. Yeah, and uh, he has done he's had a success against Justin Jefferson in the past. I don't mean to open old fantasy championship game wounds, but I mean that was part of the reason why. I was able to get the victory over you last year. It's just because uh, he did a really good job in that game against uh, Justin Jefferson, just shutting him down. So um, not a lot of players can say that, but he's uh, on the very short list. Yeah. And I mean, listen, in a division where, you know, Jefferson's probably not going anywhere, you know, I mean, you keep a guy there as long as you can to cover him. But I know it's a base card. We're going to still put that in a sleeve. Uh, let's see here. We got two cards to go. We do have a rookie card and we'll see what he does, uh, with the, how the bears offense looks next year, but Roshan Johnson rookie. Yeah. I'd be very curious to see what that bears offense looks like in general. The biggest question with the bears is going to be what they do with the number one overall pick. So I guess I'll ask you, uh, if, uh, I put your little GM cap on there. What are you doing with, uh, the bears? Number one pick. Are you taking a quarterback? Or are you sticking with Justin Fields? Are you trading the pick down? What are you doing here? It's tough because okay, so last year you didn't you you know you you didn't want to take a quarterback at one overall because you had Justin Field. You were curious, so you traded that away. And now you kind of find yourself in that same exact situation here. Quarterback class this year being better than last year, of course. Um, I don't know. I feel like if I, if I'm Justin Fields, I think has shown enough. But I mean, man, it's tough to pass up on a Caleb Williams. I'm listening to offers on the pick, but I don't know if I'm taking a quarterback. I, I, I think I, I'm either listening or I'm trying to trade back or I don't know. It's I don't know. It's tough. Yeah, you know, I, I hear what you're saying. Uh, I think I got to swing for the massive upside. Um, obviously, Justin Fields, uh, you know, he's a good player, but I don't know that he's ever going to be a top five quarterback, a top 10 quarterback. So I think if I have a chance to draft a guy who has best quarterback in the league potential like a Caleb Williams or or maybe they think that about one of these other quarterbacks but I'm assuming if they stick with the number one pick they're going to take Caleb I think I would swing for that massive upside and then just trade Justin Fields off to whatever team and you you could get a late first for him second round pick for him you you can get something for Justin Fields who will probably be you know a league average starter for the next six or seven years so uh that's probably the direction i would lean in if it were me and don't forget the bears have what uh, let me count here as i have the helmets one two three four five six seven eight they have the what their own pick at nine or ten as well so i mean they, they, they've got the ability to really just kind of dictate what they want to do they're dictating the draft this year more than anybody yep 100 percent. and especially uh with the quarterbacks at the top of the draft it's not just them you know washington's going to take a quarterback the Patriots are probably going to take a quarterback, so you're probably going to have top three in some order. It's probably going to be Caleb Williams, Drake May, and and then I'm not sure Jaden Daniels, maybe uh, Michael Penix, um, maybe, maybe Bo Nix if one of these teams falls in love with him. Maybe maybe JJ McCarthy raises draft stock off of what he did in the national championship game. I'm not entirely sure how it's going to play out. Um, so, but I think we're going to see a lot of quarterbacks going early and often just because it's the most important position. There's too many teams at the top of the draft who don't have one. Do you want the Giants to take a quarterback if, depending on who's sitting there? Yeah, the Giants need to take a quarterback because uh, I think what you saw with the Giants this season, especially the last couple games where Tyra Taylor was a starter, is 
the Giants issues are not scheme related. Um, the Giants issues are quarterback related in the sense that, you know, with Daniel Jones and then you saw it all, as well with uh, Tommy DeVito when he was in there, but they, the quarterbacks don't push the ball down the field. Like you need a guy who's going to be able to do that. And you saw that with Tyrod Taylor these last couple games, if, if the offensive line gives him enough time, if the quarterback can move around the pocket enough to create those opportunities, you know, you know, the scheme is fine. You'll be able to make plays downfield. Now the giants need to get better. They need to get a better offensive lineman. Sure. Mm -hmm. They need to get a number one alpha. More receiver. Than a quarterback Absolutely. hundred percent. Yeah. Like uh, I'm not saying it's just on the quarterback, but I think you saw with Daniel Jones this year, what, like when he was in there, yeah, the offensive line did not play well when he was in there. But he's also holding on to the ball way too long and like waiting for plays to develop. And he's, uh, even though he's a mobile quarterback, he's kind of running himself into sacks and not, he doesn't really have the, the whole pocket awareness that you're looking for. You kind of see that why like Daniel Jones just has limited upside in general. So yeah. I, I would be looking to upgrade the position. And if I'm the Giants, I don't know that I'm going to pick any higher than six, hopefully the next few years. So if this is the spot to do it, you know, if you have to give up, Whatever draft picks you have to give up to move up to number one, number two, wherever you got to do to get your guy, like so be it. We'll see how the draft goes here in a couple of months. Certainly going to be exciting. Now, speaking of uh, the draft, last year's draft, we got Josh Downs here as a potential subset, and he is going to be a best ball darling this year in the offseason for sure. Yeah, he has uh, shown a lot of potential. He's a pretty good player there. So, uh, uh, yeah, Chris Ballard strikes again. Colts got a good one. Good, but good receiver on the rise, and we'll see what happens with Anthony Richardson next year. Now it's time, uh, and to... we'll also see what happens with Michael Pittman, who is a free agent. That that's a very good point as well. So it could be increased workload for Josh Downs. Now it's time to get to some ninety nine tops football. Uh, got a good rookie class we're uh, hoping for here. Ah. Yeah, man. I wonder how many uh, seconds of this, how many minutes of the show is us trying to open packs of cards that won't open. You mean how many minutes of the Combined. show is us being yeah. washed? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's start off with a little Detroit Lions. Terry Fair, who is a cornerback and a kick returner for him. Kind of basic look for the card. I do like the Lions look there with the blue pants, though. That's kind of sharp. Yeah. Fan of that look. Uh, it's a fair way to start off the pack. Boom. Now, we got a former colleague of ours pictured here with the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, Mr. Rich Gannon. How about that, Rich Gannon? You should uh, <laughs> to take a picture of that one and send it to him. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Vikings, Raiders, but uh, I spent some time with the Chiefs, too, and, uh, before he went. To now, the why Raiders. does it have the Chiefs and the Raiders logos down there on the bottom? Because obviously so, he played for both teams. Did is Is that the year he went to Oakland? It's a transaction card. If you see on the bottom there, if it'll focus, it says transactions there on the bottom. Ah, I see. Yes. And uh, also not a great look there for uh, future Hall of Famer Will Shields who's on his stomach there. Very good eye there because you can clearly see that Shields may be doing something that's going to get him a flag. Uh, let's see. We got Ricky. Speaking of the Raiders, we got a former tight end, Ricky Dudley. I do remember him vaguely. Yeah, uh, Ricky Dudley, solid player. So, uh, yeah, definitely remember some guys there. All right. So we got uh, Corey Fuller from the Cleveland Browns, uh, the defensive back cornerback there uh, in practice. Uh, now, this one is, uh, you know, th this one's not going to bring up too many fond memories for me. Another transaction card, and thank God they traded him. Kyle Brady from the Jets, and one of the many first-round whiffs. And there he is, a traded to the Jaguars. Oh boy, how about that? Yeah, uh, that that that's uh, that's rough. At least that era of Jets football is uh, sort of gone and behind in terms of the. Uh, all right, we're just going to take all these guys in, you know, the top five, top ten. Who actually, no, you can't even say that because they took Darnold and they took Zach Wilson and. Yeah, yeah. What, what what are you doing? I understand you're trying to make me feel better, and as a friend I, and pal, I appreciate that. But um, and I, the reason I got up and I didn't have it out. Kyle Brady also got a starting lineup. Like that's how pathetic that era was. That he was like considered like at the tier to get one. Uh, uh, so so they they planted their flag with Kyle Brady and it didn't work out. So it did not work out. Now we we got a couple of cool ones coming up here. Uh, and speaking of uh, mediocre tight ends, uh, probably a favorite of Peyton Manning's Ken Dilger. 
Yeah, uh, I don't really have much to say about Ken Dilger, so uh, moving on. He's no Dallas Clark. He's no Dallas Clark, that is for sure. Now we got, now here, here is a hell of a linebacker, Willie McGinnis, the Patriots. Well, yeah, Willie McGinnis, hell of a player. Uh, obviously, he's been a longtime television analyst now for NFL Network, so uh, a multi-time Super Bowl champion. I mean, it's a pretty good card there to pull. We're going to have a few good – we're going to have one really good card to close on here. Let's uh, breeze through here. We got uh, Mike Pritchard from the Seahawks, wide receiver, about the classic Seahawks look there back in their AFC West days. Very nice. Yeah, you almost forgot they were in the AFC West. They were. And then we got uh, Hardy Nickerson here, good uh, linebacker for the Tampa Bay Bucks. Also got a starting lineup of him in the old uh, creamsicle jerseys there. Good middle linebacker. His son also is playing in the league for a bit. Now we're going to close with two strong ones here. Uh, we got a nice looking base card here of Terrell Davis going against the Dallas Cowboys there. Mm, there you go. Hall of Famer Terrell Davis. Hall of Famer. So we got a little Hall of Fame card there. Now, I'm going to go back to this slide for a minute because I want you to guess which of the rookies that we were hoping for in this pack is sitting right in front of me. Which do you think it is of those four? Ooh. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, so. <sighs> I think if I were you, uh, so this uh, this is a really interesting exercise. Uh, you got two Hall of Famers there, and Edger and James and Champ Bailey. Uh, but I feel like and Tory and Tory Holt should be in as well. He should we'll get in this year. But I feel like because he's a quarterback, Donovan McNabb might have the most value out of any of them. So uh, I'm not really, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I. I think I would want the quarterback, so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hope for your sake you got Don McNabb, but I'm gonna guess you got Edger and James. Drum roll, please. The reveal. There he is, Donovan McNabb. How about that? So yeah, nice little Donovan McNabb rookie pull there. Uh, not a very popular pick in uh, Philadelphia at the time because they wanted Ricky Williams. So uh, 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 you know what a shock. Philadelphia fans uh, got it wrong at the time. And th- and that's just that's a perfect example of don't let your fans draft the team. <laughs> don't let your fans draft it. Yeah, we have and, and also don't let uh Mike Dicka dra- draft the team because uh in that case, yeah, then they would trade all your draft picks for Ricky, Ricky Williams and then take the rest of the weekend off. I, I, I mean, talk about I mean that's like a Mike Babchick move in the rookie draft, just trading <laughs> away all the picks because he doesn't want to be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> I got my guy, I'm good. I got a running back, I'm done. Take my picks, go. Uh, Babchuk just wants to sit by the little the little kitty pool and uh, you know be harassed by his kids. Like the last thing he wants to do is like the fifth round of our uh, dynasty rookie draft is uh, you know searching through and trying to find like a dart throw wide receiver. To a fifth round receiver that's like oh he's the he's already the wide receiver four on the depth chart. Let me take him. You know that guy. Yeah, the, that is the last thing Mike Babchuk wants to do. <laughs> So a uh, good, very good pack there. That uh, ninety nine pack out of, and uh, by the way, a little detail about that pack. That pack I bought it off eBay. It came all the way from Alaska, so it's probably the pack that has traveled the furthest that have been opened on this show. So uh, might very have to nice. get buy from that guy. How about that? All right, so uh, mystery slab time. Yeah, so uh, let's see what this is. Hopefully, it's uh, not somebody who's uh, dead or in jail, and it's. Uh, Somebody we actually want to pull for or Sam Slab. Darnold. That seems to be the theme here. Dead in jail or Sam Darnold or Sam Darnold. No, it's not. But this uh, this may fall under the duplicate one, though. So we uh, we might be doing a re pull here because we have uh, a 2020 Panini Select uh, blue die cut uh, mint 9.5 Jordan Love rookie card. Not the first time we've gotten the Jordan Love rookie card, although I think this is the first time we've gotten the blue die cut. I was gonna say the blue die cut definitely is. Let me different. uh, let me see if I can find the other one here because I I have the box with all the other previous ones here. So, yeah, Jordan Love. Uh, let's see, Jordan Love die cut. And of course, it's not the very first card that I cycled through so here. ESA ten for that is going for sixty five bucks. So drop it down a tiny bit and you got you got your money's worth on that one. Oh, you know what i might have put the jordan love one away because that was one i said i wanted to keep so it was. Uh, it now was i have good. so now i have a decision to make well i have two decisions to make because now i have to decide which jordan love card do i want to keep but also i think it would, ooh, i think we probably have to open one more to get somebody unique right or at least right. try to get somebody unique i'm never going to stop you from opening more mystery slabs right, i'll record another half hour if it's all mystery slabs 
<laughs> well, unfortunately, I'm running out of them. I only have a couple left here. Uh, so uh, uh, I, I feel like we'll, we'll save those for next week, regardless right. of what happens. All right. So we got. Uh, all right. A 2021 Panini Prism draft picks CSG nine Trevor Lawrence. In this now, year. You, you probably would have rather pulled that card at the beginning of the season versus the end of the season, considering how things went down the stretch for Jacksonville. But, yeah, I think they'll bounce back in a big way next year for sure. Yeah, I think so, too. He's a, you know, it's funny, you know, he's considered a can't miss quarterback prospect. He didn't really have the greatest year this year, which, you know, for a guy at the end of year three or, yeah, this was year three for him. So, you kind of want to see a little bit more of a leap. I don't want to say Trevor Lawrence is a bust because he's not, but not yet. You know, but like he also hasn't necessarily been like that can't miss. Like he's probably like a fringe top ten quarterback right now. But you kind of hope, you know, by by this point that he'd be higher in the list and he'd be, you know, the second or third best quarterback in the league. Oh, don't I know it? Because I came into this year in my other dynasty league, which is a super flex league with Rodgers and Lawrence as my quarterbacks. And obviously we all know what happened to Aaron Rodgers. And then Lawrence went down. Luckily, I drafted CJ Stroud. So that ended up working out for me. But yeah, Lawrence did, you know, some weeks he was good, but he did not deliver the way we thought he was going to deliver this year. But listen, that's a top overall rookie, uh, uh, top overall uh, pick. Jacksonville could certainly bounce back and take the AFC by storm next year and maybe lives up to it. Yep. So, uh, very happy to get Trevor Lawrence there. Not sure what we're going to do with Trevor Lawrence. Uh, I, I I would prefer he was in his Jaguars uniform, but who knows? I know you like you don't you're not a big fan of those college cards. No, I'm not. Even though he's, I mean, he's as good a college player. He's going to be a college football Hall of Famer from his college, from his collegiate career. Won a national championship there. I think he only lost one game in college, if I remember right. If that sounds right or none or something like that. He only lost one. Yeah, I forget what it was. But he 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 he's not used to losing, and he's in the, and he had to get used to that down the stretch here for the Jaguars in the regular season. Now, yeah, well, it, it didn't help that his first year in the pros, he was with Urban Meyer. But yeah, that, you know, that's almost a mulligan year. Like whatever, we won't even count that year. Right. It was your rookie year for card purposes. Otherwise, it was not your rookie year. Now, all right. So starting lineup on boxing time and uh, Jared knows it is a football player, but that's all he knows. And he's got five questions to figure out who it is. So let's go. All right. Um, the uniform that this player is uh, portrayed in, in this figure. Yes. Is his team in the playoffs? Currently? Yes. Yeah. One of the 14 teams that made it. Yes. Okay. Right, so that's question number one. Is this player a pro football Hall of Famer? Yes, without a doubt. Is this player a quarterback? Yes. Two questions to go, and you are moving along very nicely here. Um, trying to think of the way we want to frame this. Um, I'm gonna need a second here to think of a really good. Sure, question. take your time. You got two questions. You, you, you've you've done a good job getting narrowing it down. You still got a little work to do, but has this player, or is this player, a prominent? analyst on either television or radio for the no NFL. and honestly he had a very brief career as an tv analyst like you probably wouldn't even remember him doing it um but he is a guy that probably didn't need to do it from his era like he was fine just walking off into the sunset all right um is this player a super bowl champion multi-time super bowl champion is it Joe Montana? Correct. Now, here, here, now I'm going to throw. A, which is it? 49ers or Chiefs? Which one are we going here? Ooh, uh, ooh, that's a good one. Uh, they're both in the playoffs. They're both in the playoffs, but I'm trying to remember when he left the 
Chiefs uh, when he left the 49ers. I'm going to say he's portrayed with the Chiefs here. Ding, 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 ding. Correct. Yeah. I have a photo. I opened up the uh, classic doubles with Dwight Clark on this one. Pictured in the Niners. Figured I needed him in the Chiefs. This is actually his traded one because you can kind of see there. It has the trade it to Kansas City on 420.93. There's the aerial artist. So good job. You really got down. To How about that? All right. Tough to match the pose on the card when the cards of a different team. But there he is. The aerial artist himself, Joe Montana. Good series. Actually, this one comes with two cards. This one has the traded card right here. Traded to the Chiefs for 2892 or three there. 93. And let's get him out of the box. I, I I almost I was pretty confident where we were going with this one to the point where I almost asked with my last question, was he on a, a commercial for Skechers? <laughs> I forgot that he was on a commercial. <laughs> Completely forgot that till you just said it. So there we go. Joe Montana pictured uh, with the Kansas City Chiefs there, led him to the AFC Championship game that year, lost to the Bills. I believe that was their second run there. But uh, yeah, I got the red pants the, uh, with the yellow stripe and number 19, uh, not the 16 there. Of course, that's Len Dawson, couldn't wear it. Uh, but there you go, Joe Montana. That's a good look up there. That's my second Chief. I have Derek Thomas as well. Pretty good company, I suppose. Pretty good KC Chief Company there. Now, he is going to be joining our starting lineup studio audience next week. Uh, featured here this week, we, of course, uh, when we recorded this, Michigan won the national championship the day before. So Charles Woodson and the 98 Heisman was happy to make an appearance. Uh, the Lions, uh, 97 Herman Moore there for you will keep it in the state of Michigan. He was ahead of his time. He was a big, big possession receiver that uh, 20 years later probably would have made a lot more money. Then in the middle there, the great one, Wayne Gretzky from his 98 freeze frame series. Then we got Oscar Robinson from the 1989 Legend Series, pictured with the Cincinnati Royals. And then, of course, last week, Orlando El Duque Hernandez was the guy who got out of the box, uh, the 2000 edition there of the starting lineup. And uh, Mr. Montana will be there next week uh, for our January 27th episode. Very nice. How about that? Uh, this was a good one. We uh, did got some good baseball cards. We got a Donovan McNabb rookie card. You know, we crapped on Kyle Brady and I uh, got a Joe Montana starting lineup. All in all. And we talked some Juan Soto. You know, good stuff. I'm excited. Are you excited to come back next week? We'll do one more for this season. Yeah, I think we do one more for the season. I'm going to do one more this season. But on that note, we appreciate the uh, you tuning in here on the Better Sports Network and Fantasy Alarm YouTube pages. Like and subscribe. Hit us up on Twitter at Pucking Thoughts for me, at Mr. Jared Moore for Jared. But for another edition of r r for uh, the Saturday, January 20th, I'm Adam Bernard for Jared Moore. See you next Saturday for the season finale of Rip and Riff. <laughs>